So in today's video, Alan and I are going to go over EIP-1559. We're going to give our opinion about it and kind of our thoughts about it and, and where the profitability is now for mining and where we think it's um, going to go. We're first going to take a look at etherchain.org slash burn. It kind of gives you a quick rundown of what EIP-11559 is doing. Uh, so far, 20,460 ETH have been burned. Uh, it's been about since uh, August 5th, the morning of East Coast time. And so far, there's been $63 million worth of ETH burned off. It seems right now it's 3.14 a minute. Uh, I remember when the day it happened, it was getting all the way up to eight to 10 ETH a minute. So it seems like now it's uh, mellowed out a little bit with three ETH a minute per hour, uh, 24 hours right now. Um, you can take a look down here and see each block being uh, burned. And you can see this one, the most recent one was 0.12, but before it was 1.1, 1.16. So it kind of fluctuates, but it seems like it's anywhere around one ETH being burned per block. So when EIP-1559 first got introduced, the developers uh, kind of were trying to reassure the miners because the miners were going a little crazy thinking that it was going to be the end of mining. Um, and the developers were trying to reassure everyone saying, you know, having supply uh, burned would, in theory, increase the price of the current supply, the current Ethereum that's that's um, available, um, that's already mined and the new blocks that are coming. Um, so it, now that it's been a couple of days since EIP-1559 was released, the price of Ethereum has really had a, I guess you could call a bull run. Um, I think the price per Ethereum at the time of this video is about 3150 um, so the, the developers are right in the idea that, um, you know, cutting the, the supply down and, and doing this, this burn rate that you see here on the screen would increase the, the price of Ethereum. So, you know, they, they kept talking about this, the, this theory that it, it would increase. And so it's actually kind of comforting that it is, um, you know, uh, we have a, a small mining farm and uh, the, the profitability that and all these doom um, stories that were coming out and videos that were being released saying that it was going to be in a mining, um, you know, the, the profitability now with, with this price increase is relatively close to what it was before EIP 1559 got released. I think I'm may, maybe within 10 percent of what it was, which, you know, when these videos were coming out that, you know, EIP 1559 would ruin mining, that's when blocks were at 20 and 30 and you know people were making i think what what alan like in 12 dollars off of 3090 or maybe even 15 dollars off of 3090 a day yeah for, i think it got up up 20 dollars or more yeah <laughs> and so, so people were buying cards and saying like okay i can get a return on my card and you know uh two months that's great i'll, I'll pay double what uh msrp is on ebay and StockX and these third you know, you know party markets so um it yeah, and I think a th good thing with this is it's going to bring some stability to the gas fees and you know what what miners are going to be getting out of this. Yeah, Where it seems like since you know it's only been a few days, so of course nobody's 100% sure. But as time goes on, we'll see that the you know mining profits may you know be stabilized. Where of course the difficulty will go up, but you know you'll be able to gauge. You're not going to be worrying about these. 30 block, you know, 30 ether blocks that one um, pool gets and where another one doesn't. So going off those high network fees of Ethereum uh, blocks being, you know, 20 or 30 per block on the retail end, we accept cryptocurrency. And, uh, you know, for, for an Ethereum transaction to take place, someone would have to pay around 15% more just to be able to make the payment on our website. And then on the back end, for us to convert that payment, that Ethereum over to fiat, we would pay close to, I would want to say, 30% sometimes. We would kind of just hold it, which in a real world scenario, I mean, that's going to really push off retailers from adopting, you know, blockchain um, and uh, adopting cryptocurrency payments into their businesses. Um, you know, they want something stable um, and, and, and having, you know, random gas fees when, when network congestion is high is, uh, is it's not good overall for the, the whole project of Ethereum as a whole. 
Uh, taking a look at what to mine, we can see the profitability right now. Uh, for, let's take a look at um, 6 30 70s. Uh, they calculate to be 348. Uh, what would you say you could get uh, overclocking? Uh, I think each 3070 comfortably gets around 62. So uh, six of those would be 372. And then let me check. And then they, they, they estimate 0.1 cents per kilowatt. Of course, some people get less, some people maybe a little more, but I guess we, we can stick with that. So after we calculated it, it looks like we're getting after electricity $27.65 a day for six 3070s. $27 a day is, I, I, in my opinion, great. Um, I, I remember looking at these profit calculators for you know the past about five years and, um, you know, there were some times and when I say times, you know, a, almost a year at a time where you kind of almost hover around just beating electricity. So, you know, being able to, you know, ha get 20, you know, net twenty seven dollars and sixty five cents from, you know, grossing twenty nine dollars and fifty three cents, I think is uh, still great. And this is post EIP one five five nine. So I think mining right now is is thriving I, and I, I still feel like a lot of people are going to be jumping in. So for twenty seven dollars a day net, um, let's look at and calculate what this six card rig would actually cost you and what kind of return that you're looking at. Um, right now, it looks like 3070s are going for, um, here's one for 950. Uh, here's a new one for 13, uh, 1099. I feel like these prices would probably be the most accurate. Um, yeah, probably 11 to 1200. You could yeah, I would say let, let's use 1150 as a, a fair number here. Um, here's a, a great website that I've used. It's called MyCryptoBuddy.com. Um, you can do different mining calculators on here. Um, so we're going to use this as kind of our base here. Uh, this, this prior wasn't so accurate because it didn't take into account all these different EIPs that came in. But I feel like this more now, more now than ever would be more accurate because the gas fees and, and the network congestion and everything is, is more streamlined after this EIP came live. Now it seems like it's more on the price fluctuation over the difficulty. Exactly. So for here, we're going to calculate out. Let's pull up our calculator. And 1150 for each car times six. Um, that's $6,900 US. And what would you say, Alan? Maybe throw in another 500 for motherboard, CPU, RAM, power supply, and risers? Yeah, yeah that's a good estimate. So that's 7,400. So we're going to put 7,400 here. Um, we're going to keep the prices the, uh, the same. We're not going to change that. We'll keep the power cost at uh, 10 cents a kilowatt. Power, I think, was 780 watts. And our hash rate was, uh, I think, 372. 372. Yeah, 372. So here with the upfront cost, it shows the profitable, it's profitable never. Um, it looks like in 12 months, you'll still be down about 3,400 US. Um, if we bump this out to 24 months, you can kind of see the chart here, um, you know, level out at uh, about still under $3,000 from what you spent on the entire rig. Um, however, these difficulty charts really are not as accurate as the network has been historically. This chart is taking into account a 12% a month increase in network difficulty, which, you know, in the past 12 months, I would say is kind of accurate. However, this chart is also going into likely after Ethereum goes into proof of stake. So it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, use this as a, as a baseline. So if we take the difficulty off here, we can switch this down to, let's just use a year, 12 months. Um, you know, if the difficulty never changed, ideally, um, you would, you know, hit your ROI right here at around... Um, what it says June 6, 2022, but I think everyone knows with crypto and everything that date would not be accurate. Um, and it's likely that proof of stake would be, I think, uh, right around that time. Um, I, I believe uh, they've been talking about 2022 as being the year that Ethereum switches over to proof of stake. Um, 
However, obviously, the, this chart will curve as the difficulty goes up and as the difficulty goes down. You know, th there can always be a bear market that comes. Hopefully not. But, um, you know, there are market corrections and it's up right now. So it's it's likely that it will go down. Um, but then it's likely that it will go back up. And also looking at this chart um, and I see a lot of YouTubers and a lot of uh, you know, articles that talk about ROI, you know, re return on your investment, return on your investment. And none of them really take into account the actual equipment and everything. It it usually looks like that they're using an ROI analysis with with their equipment just being worth zero dollars. Um, but really, at the end of it, if you can pay off your equipment in a year, then you still have that equipment it fully paid off. So if you were to sell all, all that equipment, you wouldn't just have a return on your investment that, that's broken even, you would be uh, in the green on your investment. So now that EIP 1559 is live and it's been around for a couple of days and Ethereum price is up and um, you know we can kind of get some projections down, would you build a rig right now, Alan? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of variables and you know, the price of Ether and the cost of the equipment, but Historically, it's shown that um, mining is here to stay and you still have a good amount of time to be able to get your profitability back from the cards you buy and also be able to have uh, salvage costs to these cards if in the future where only LHR cards are still available, um, non-LHR LHR cards are going to be, um, there's not going to be many of them left in the wild. So the circulating supply of Ether right now is $117 million. Um, they show right here zero for the max supply because Ether does not have a max supply. Um, people estimate it's about 3 to 4% uh, per year inflation rate. And uh, now after EIP 1556, uh, they're estimating about 1 to 2% of Ether are going to be, that's mined, is going to be burned. Yeah, I always kind of thought that that max supply just not having a, a, a number in there was always really not comforting. You, you had no idea what it would be from, you know, just analyzing it kind of from a market cap perspective. You know, if if there's a trillion Ether that, that are in, in circulation and Ether is at a dollar, you know, that's a trillion dollar market cap. So it's it's kind of like, you know, it's hard to forecast in price what the, you know, Ethereum should be when there's no max supply number there. So, you know, in respect to uh, burning ETH, you know, in, in the way 1559 is doing it, I, I think it's overall um, a great thing for Ethereum. Yeah, the, you know, lowering the inflation rate, you know, people can now expect to, hey, over the years, you know, there, there's not, yeah, like you said, getting to a trillion, you know, getting to 200 million Ether. So, yeah, I mean, you know, in relation to profitability with mining, I really don't think 1559 did a, a nearly as big of a hit as you know some people were, were thinking it was going to do. Uh, I, th I think that o overall, 1559, and I know I'm probably going to get burned for saying this, but I think it's a, a good thing for Ethereum and for Ethereum mining. So, yeah, guys, uh, drop a comment down below. Let us know what your profitability is like. Um, maybe, maybe it's a little bit different than ours, or maybe you're not even mining Ethereum. But, you know, we'd love to hear what you guys think of 1559 now that it's released and it's uh, not this doomsday cloud that's over you anymore. Uh, but now it's here, and uh, we'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about it. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to be putting out a lot of content, and see you guys next time.